Okay, dear students. In the previous class, we had discussed microbes in the industry and microbes in the uh, treatment of sewage, isn't it? So today's class will be discussing about microbes in the production of biogas. So we are discussing about the microorganisms involved in the production of biogas. Okay. So you can see here the biogas uh, chamber or the gober gas chamber that has been established by a farmer. So the biogas that is obtained is used for cooking purpose as well as for lighting purposes. They are utilizing this gober gas or biogas, what they call it as. See, biogas is a mixture of mainly, mixture of gases, mainly what are those? Methane produced by the microbes such as methanogens. So biogas is a mixture of gases, mainly methane, which is produced by the microbes, that is the methanogens, okay, the archaebacterians, methanogens. Methanogens, they grow anaerobically on cellulose material and produce methane along with carbon dioxide and hydrogen. So they uh, don't require oxygen. They grow anaerobically on cellulosic material and they produce methane along with carbon dioxide and hydrogen. Example for this uh, methanogen is methanobacterium. So methanobacterium is found in the anaerobic sludge and also in the rumen of cattle. That is the digestive system of cattle. Uh, they have this methanobacterium. So rumen of cattle, which is utilized for cellulose digestion. So they have a symbiotic association with this bacterium, which digests the cellulose digestion. So even in the rumen of cattle, you find this methanobacterium, uh, which helps in the digestion of cells, the cellulose, which is a major component of cell wall. So the biogas is used for cooking and lighting purposes. Okay, cattle dung or gober, what they call it as, or sagni in Canada. Uh, so this sagni is used for, they contain this bacteria, methanobacterium. So this dung is used to produce biogas or gober gas, uh, or in Canada, you can so call it as sagni gas, okay, whatever you call it as. So cattle dung or gober contain these bacteria. So dung is used to produce the biogas, okay? The cow dung is used to produce the biogas or gober gas. So what are the parts of a biogas plant? Okay, so they have a concrete tank. So they have a concrete tank, so which is 10 to 15 feet deep. They collect bio waste and slurry of dung. So they have a concrete tank which collects the bio waste and slurry of dung. A floating cover is placed over the slurry. So there is a floating cover which is placed over the slurry, which keeps on rising as the biogas is produced. So there is a floating cover which is placed over the slurry. So this uh, cow dung slurry, which keeps on rising as the biogas is produced. Okay. Uh, second one is the outlet to supply the biogas. This is the outlet, methane, carbon dioxide, hydrogen sulfide, or hydrogen gas and outlet to there is also an outlet to remove the spent slurry which is used as fertilizer so there is a feeder from which it enters into the concrete tank so concrete tank has a floating cover so which is placed over the slurry and it keeps on rising as the biogas is produced then there is the uh, outlet to supply the biogas so which is used for lighting and cooking purpose and there is an outlet for this spent slurry we call this after the removal of biogas we call this slurry or the cow dung uh, gober we call it a spent slurry which is used as fertilizer okay so these are the parts of a typical parts of a biogas plant so the Indian Agricultural Research Institute, IARI, and Kadi and Village Industries Commission, KVIC, they developed technology of biogas production in India. So the Indian Agricultural Research Institute and Kadi and Village Industry Commission, so they developed the technology of biogas production in India. So you can see a concrete tank and a floating a floater, so which uh, floats above the biogas, okay? 
and uh, there is also the uh, feeder and the outlet and uh, uh, outlet to remove the spent slurry so all these are involved in this uh, the gober gas unit so indian agricultural research institute and kadi and village industry commission developed technology of biogas production in india so they developed the technology of biogas production in india so microbes has biocontrol agents the next uh, that we have we have studied microbes in household products microbes in industry microbes in domestic uh, sewage treatment microbes in production of biogas microbes has biocontrol agents they are used to control the pests or pathogens so they can be used as a biocontrol agents okay so the microbes can also be used as biocontrol agents let us understand what are those uh, biocontrol agents that we can utilize see every pest has its own predator so we can use those predators to bring the uh, pest which is a prey for them under control so biocontrol implies it is the use of biological methods for controlling plant diseases and pests so biocontrol it is going to imply as utilization of biological methods for controlling plant diseases and pests okay example is ladybird so this beetle controls aphids dragonflies control mosquitoes so this lady uh, bird or ladybug what we call it as so the uh, ladybird or lady beetle it controls aphids so you can see the polka dots many of these patterns of polka dots that you use on sarees and textiles is copied from nature so just uh, remember this so the ladybird beetle uh, controls aphids since they are the predator for those and similarly the dragonfly controls mosquitoes so the dragonflies or helicopter flies what you call it as so they control the mosquitoes okay they, because they are their natural predators so they are they can be used as biocontrol agents for controlling the pests like aphids as well as the drag the mosquitoes the chemical pesticides and insecticides kill both useful and harmful organisms and they cause pollution see they not only uh, destroy the biocontrol agents but uh, they not only destroy the mosquitoes and aphids but also the biocontrol agents like uh, the uh, ladybug or the uh, dragonflies so they are also killed in the process so that is a harmful effect of utilizing the chemical pesticide and insecticide since they kill both useful and harmful organism and they cause pollution so biocontrol method has no such problems see this enlargement of head in this infant is because of this uh, entry of endodan uh, into a food system and accumulation of that which has resulted in the infant having an enlarged head okay so they are not only harmful for uh, the insects in nature but also human beings when they enter through our food improperly washed vegetables fruits uh, or greens so they lead to the entry of this uh, harmful chemical substances into our food diet so chemical pesticides and insecticides kill both useful and harmful organisms and they also cause pollution so biocontrol method has no such problem because for every prey there is a predator for every uh, insect there is an antagonistic insect so you can use this natural predators to bring into control the aphids mosquitoes they can be brought into control instead of going for the uh, insecticides or pesticides chemicals so the what are the uses some of the microbial biocontrol agents are bt bacillus thuringiensis today there are a lot of variety of uh, bt cotton bt brinjal okay so the bt stands for bacillus thuringiensis again we'll discuss about this concept of uh, this biotechnology transgenic plants where we will be discussing about the bt cotton and uh, other plants so which these plants will be producing toxic substances which 
naturally kill its pests or insects okay so they they would have introduced the gene by this recombinant dna technology which we'll be discussing after the in the application aspects of biotechnology so at present you just remember what is bt bacillus thuringiensis it's a bacteria so they can be used to control better butterfly caterpillars the dried spores of bt are available in sachets so to control butterfly caterpillar you can use this bt the dried spores of bacillus thuringiensis they are available in sachets they are mixed with water and sprayed on to vulnerable plants such as brassicas and fruit trees so these are eaten by the caterpillar in their gut the toxin is released and the larvae get killed so you can purchase this dried spores endospores of bt which is available in sachets you mix that in water and spray on to the vulnerable plants such as brassicas and fruit trees so these which are eaten by the caterpillar so in their gut the toxin is released and the larvae get killed okay that is the role of bacillus thuringiensis which can be used as a biocontrol agents so scientists have introduced uh, bacillus thuringiensis toxin genes into plants example is bt cotton so by recombinant dna technology so bt cotton is a transgenic plant which has a foreign gene that is from uh, bacillus thuringiensis so the toxin genes are introduced into plants so we call them as bt cotton okay or otherwise uh, the farmers can just purchase a sachet of this uh, bt uh, spores Uh, which are mixed in water and sprayed on this vulnerable plants that is plants which are easy victims to this uh, caterpillars of butterfly so such as brassicas and fruit trees so when the caterpillars eat them so in their gut the toxin is released and the larvae get killed so this is how you can use bacillus thuringiensis as a biocontrol agents so the second one is trichoderma species so they are seen in the root ecosystems they control several plant pathogens so the trichoderma fungi trichoderma is a fungi so the trichoderma species are seen in the root ecosystems that is within the soil so they control several plant pathogens so this is also a biocontrol agent trichoderma species a fungi is also a biocontrol agent baculoviruses especially genus nucleopolyhydrovirus so the baculoviruses they attack insects and other arthropods so the baculovirus uh, you know the virus it consists of nucleic acid and proteins so they are nucleoproteinaceous in nature they are polyhydrovirus okay baculovirus especially genus they belong to this genus nucleo polyhydro hydro uh, virus polyhyd virus they attack this baculoviruses can also be used as a biocontrol agents they attack insects and other arthropods arthropods in the sense it can be millipede centipede it can be the spider uh, it can be the crustaceans they all belong to arthropods they attack the insects and other arthropods the baculovirus it is suitable for species specific see so the some of this baculoviruses they can uh, attack only the a particular species not all species so they are species specific narrow spectrum that is they don't kill other insects only that particular species they are going to infect them and kill them so they have a narrow spectrum insecticidal application and desirable in integrated pest management program to conserve beneficial insects so a farmer would like to kill only the harmful insects and not the uh, beneficial insects like uh, ladybugs and dragonflies they don't want to kill them okay because they are uh, natural biocontrol agents so the best way if you use a, a, a chemical insecticide or pesticide it kills both beneficial and harmful agents but when you are using baculovirus they are species specific so especially this genus nucleo polyhydrovirus they are species specific and they are going to only harm that uh, harmful species so the baculoviruses since they are suitable for species specific and they have a narrow spectrum of insecticidal application they are uh, generally preferred in integrated pest management program integrated pest management program to conserve the beneficial insects so they can be utilized to conserve the beneficial insects and kill only the harmful insects 
The next topic that we have under this uh, microbes in human welfare is microbes has biofertilizers. So microbes are utilized as biofertilizers. So this we will be discussing at present. You can see various microbes, they are being used as biofertilizers. So the instead of going for the synthetic fertilizers, so we can opt for this uh, biofertilizers which are not harmful to the soil and they do not uh, harm the fertility of the soil. So the microbes as biofertilizers, so you have this root nodules of legumes have rhizobium bacteria, azospirillum. So they are all uh, microbes which help in fixing the nitrogen. They act as biofertilizers. So biofertilizers are organisms which are going to enrich the nutrient quality of the soil. So biofertilizer microbes probes are organisms which are uh, going to enrich the nutrient quality of the soil. Example, bacteria, fungi, uh, cyanobacteria, that is blue-green algae, they are all biofertilizer microbes, microbes which act as biofertilizers. They help in improving the nutrient quality of the soil. So that is, it might help in fixation of nitrogen or uh, other nutrients like potassium, phosphorus, they might be uh, in a way benefited by this uh, microbes. So which help, which help in the uh, improvement of biofertilizers. Microbes as biofertilizers, uh, the fungi, bacteria, and cyanobacteria can be utilized. So one very good example in nature is rhizobium bacteria. Okay, so we have already discussed about leg hemoglobin legumes. So how the rhizobium bacteria infects the roots, we might have discussed already about. So rhizobium is a symbiotic bacteria. They are found in the root nodules of leguminous plants. So rhizobium is a symbiotic bacteria and they are found in the root nodules of leguminous plants. They fix atmospheric nitrogen. So rhizobium is a symbiotic bacteria which is found in the root nodules of leguminous plants. They fix atmospheric nitrogen. So that is one of the important aspects of the rhizobium bacteria found in the root nodules of pulses or legumes. Okay, so the free living bacteria in the soil are azospirillum and acetobacter. They, they are free living bacteria and they enrich the nitrogen content of the soil. So azospirillum and acetobacter, they are uh, going to enrich the nitrogen content of the soil. So mycorrhiza is a fungi. So you find the symbiotic association of fungi, example, glomus with plants. The fungus gets food from the plant, okay? So symbiotic association of fungi, example, in glomus uh, with plants, you can notice this. The fungus gets food from the plant. So they are, uh, since the plants are autotrophic and fungi is heterotrophic, the fungal symbiont in turn, so they are going to benefit the uh, plants by the following. They absorb phosphorus from soil and pass it on to plant. So they give resistance. Mycorrhiza gives resistance to root-borne pathogens and tolerance to salinity and drought. So they, uh, mycorrhiza, they are going to give resistance to root-borne pathogens and they provide tolerance to salinity and drought. So they give overall increase in plant growth and development. So this is how the mycorrhiza helps the plant. So they have the fungi, the mycorrhiza, which is a fungi, it gets food from the plant. And in turn, uh, the mycorrhiza, they provide uh, the uh, various things for the plants, like they absorb phosphorus from the soil and they provide it to the plants. They give resistance to root-borne disease pathogens and tolerance. They provide tolerance to salinity, high amount of salt and drought conditions when water availability is less. They give over, so mycorrhiza plays an important role in overall uh, plant growth and development. So mycorrhiza might be ectomycorrhiza or endomycorrhiza. Okay, so you should remember about this symbiotic association of mycorrhiza. Okay, it can be outside the uh, roots externally as ectomycorrhiza or inside the root as endomycorrhiza. See, in case of pinus seeds, pinus are gymnosperm plants, the seeds, pinus seeds can undergo germination only in the presence of mycorrhiza. 
so it is obligatory for them without mycorrhiza the pinus seeds do not undergo germination so you should understand about the uh, mycorrhiza which also acts as a biofertilizers the cyanobacteria, especially the blue-green algae, nostoc, anabina, oscillatoria, they play a very important role in fixing the atmospheric nitrogen. So they are autotrophic microbes. That is, they can synthesize their own food. They also help in the fixation of atmospheric nitrogen. Example is anabina, nostoc, oscillatoria. They help in fixing the atmospheric nitrogen. In paddy fields, what you can notice is cyanobacteria serve as biofertilizers it also adds organic matter to the soil and increases its fertility so in paddy fields we notice that the uh, cyanobacteria they serve as biofertilizers so and it also adds organic matter to the soil and it increases their fertility that you can notice in cyanobacteria which is a blue grain algae it is an autotrophic microbe and they fix the atmospheric nitrogen so example for this blue green algae are anabina, nostoc and oscillatoria. So you have to remember about that. In paddy fields, especially the cyanobacteria is a biofertilizer, which adds organic matter to the soil and they increase the fertility of the soil. They increase its fertility. So this completes our discussion on microbes in uh, the microbes in human welfare. So this completes us. Any clarifications or doubts, you can just let me know. Okay. Any clarifications or doubts, dear students, you just let me know.